but thank you very much for attending this press conference. We postponed it yesterday, but we've then been able to have it now, given that uh, the fourth episode has been aired. I'm just waiting time so that people are all settled. I'll do three things. The first thing is I will explain why we have a lawyer addressing the press conference and not the client. That's the first thing I will explain. Then secondly, I will explain certain facts that my client wants to put across to the public and the world. Then thirdly, I will give my client the reaction to what comes out of the documentary, the four episodes in the Algebra process. So those three things. First, it is permitted by the law of any country that a person can act through their lawyer. It's a very established process. Lawyers are trained exactly for that purpose. They act on behalf of people, and they don't only act in the courts of law, they act in and outside the court. So it is perfectly permitted by established systems around the world that a person can send their lawyer to say what they would want to say. When the lawyer is coming and saying these things, the lawyer is merely speaking on behalf of their client. We are not defending each other here. I'm just here to say what my client is saying. That's number one. Then I come to number two. There are certain facts that my client wants to be put across very clearly to the world. And then these are the things that will explain whatever we will explain. First and foremost, my client was appointed by the president of Zimbabwe as his ambassador at large. He is very humbled by that appointment, and he has committed himself to executing his duties in that office to the best of his ability, honestly, sincerely, and in the interests of the country. Number two, my client wants it to be put right across on record that he has never, ever done anything on behalf of the president, no deals on behalf of the president, no activities on behalf of the president. His relationship with the president of Zimbabwe, His Excellency E.G. Minangago, is one of principal and agent, one of superior and subordinate, and he has that relationship. Thirdly, in that regard, my client wants to make it very clear that he has no relationship whatsoever with members of the president's family. He only has a relationship with the president, which is a formal, professional relationship. He wants me to tell you that he has never met with the first lady. He actually has never met the first lady of Zimbabwe because his relationship is with the president. That must be clear. Then I want to read a passage here from my notes with my client, which we would want the whole world to, to understand. My client, who is the ambassador, Hubert Angel, wants it known that he has not been, has never been, and will never be, be involved in any criminal activity whatsoever. More particularly, he would like it to be stated that he has not been involved in any form of gold dealing or gold smuggling, nor has he ever engaged in money laundering by whatever name it may be called. So the insinuations in the Al Jazeera documentary are wholly baseless. He also wants it known that in his work, immediately after his appointment, he went to do some work, and that work is within the first six months of his work is when these issues that have come in the Al Jazeera documentary came about. Now I want to go to that uh, aspect 
but this general aspect about the statement I have made, he has never been involved in anything. He holds a diplomatic passport, yes, but at the same time, he has a British passport. In all his work, he has used his British passport. So he travels around the world as an ordinary holder of a British passport. It is only in three instances where he has used his diplomatic passport to travel to three countries in Africa that include Zambia and Kenya. <coughs> uh, those are the instances where he has done so. But otherwise, he is not carrying himself around the world as a diplomat. He uses that British passport. So he's not. Then he has also declined to receive any payment from the Zimbabwean government. So he's not on a Zimbabwean pay. He is working for the interests of the country. I, we wish that to be right at the outset. Now we come to the third aspect, which is his involvement in the issues that have come out of the Al Jazeera process. Now I want that uh, to be clear. I will not be handing out the statements I'm reading from. These are just notes. We, so you have to rely on what we are saying. The position is this. As soon as my client was appointed, it was made known to the whole world that he would be the president's ambassador at life. There were several people in Europe and other parts of the world that wanted to do investment in the country with his facilitation. That is a fact. And then among those persons were people that were genuine and those that were not genuine. But he, he has facilitated these investment opportunities. Sometime in 2021, when the president was attending uh, COP26 in Scotland, there were a group of persons who now appear and feature in the Al Jazeera documentary who approached persons working with my client. My client has an office as an ambassador at large, so he has a team of people, a few people that are his assistants. So through one of his assistants, these people approached my client wanting to see the president and have an investment discussion with the president of Zimbabwe. These people were already in London and the president was attending COP26 in Scotland. When my client was approached by one of his teammates, he made the usual uh, ch uh, checks with his uh, subordinates to find out how much they knew of these people. He was advised by one of his, the person involved that they had been in touch with them for a period in excess of two years or whatever. They knew them very well. On that basis, my client then thought he could facilitate an interaction between those persons and the president. The rule of practice is that they were going to check what are called security checks. Who are they and so on. And these security checks had to be undertaken through the national intelligence framework of this country. So the intelligence framework of our country was undertaken. The intelligence advised my client that they had serious doubts about the person. They had serious suspicions about the person and that it was not advisable right at that stage for those persons to meet the president. In fact, national intelligence discovered that those persons intended something very dangerous, not just to the country, but to the president, that their aim was at the president and whatever. So the position which was discussed, this interaction then led to what we are calling a classified national intelligence assignment, which meant that a decision was taken with the intelligence authorities that, that the, my client would play along. He would not cancel his interactions with these persons. He would meet them and meet them as if he was going to make arrangements for them to meet the president and for them to be able to do investments in Zimbabwe. So it was in the context of a national intelligence operation. Zimbabwe wanted to gain intelligence out of it, wanted to see how far its enemies could go and what their agendas were. 
And these were issues to do with that. That is the context. Now, I should emphasize at this stage that even as I'll give you a few more details in respect of that, so that I explain what my client is saying in respect of what is coming out of the documentary, that ordinarily, these things are not told to the world. These things are not told to the public. But because of the intensity of the Al Jazeera documentary and its implications on the integrity of the operations of governmental systems in this country, my client felt obliged that he has a moral obligation at least to give an indication of what was going on. So in terms of then playing up a wrong, we want to stress that my client says even as they were going to play along, there was also a somewhat a possibility that these persons were not what the intelligence thought they were. So you would find that in some respects there would have been some element of doubt at some interactions as to are these people what we think they are and we are playing a role or they are genuine. So there will be actions by my client in the documentary which might not be consistent with the explanation that he was playing along and playing along and acting along. This is the point that uh, we wish to make. There was some element of doubt in some respects, but largely and almost mainly the actions in the documentary are consistent <coughs> with a classified national intelligence operation which was meant to see how far they would go. Now, what then happened? So in that documentary, all the things that are said, no one was phoned. I'll give that as an example. So there was no call to the first lady, for example. There was no call to Henrietta Bishwaya. These were decoys that were put in an intelligence operation. So even the statements that you hear, they are not real. That's the explanation coming from my client. Uh, if you were to put it very boldly or mildly, uh, boldly but uh, in a mild way, they were acting alone. It's unfortunate that, according to the version we are putting, it's unfortunate that it is national security issues that are then played in the public because of the agenda of these people, which agenda then forces issues that ordinarily would not be put on the, on the table to be put on the table. So I've been saying to make that clear that what you see in the documentary is merely playing along. There was never a time, never, according to my client, where people were requested to pay money to see the president. That is false. It would have been part and parcel of a process. There was never a time when the first lady was called to be able to say that they would fly jets and so forth to carry coal, or any time that a letter trial was formed. Every part of the process you see, it is part of that aspect which comes in. If there are few instances that are not directly consistent with that, I've watched them, I've discussed them with my client to get an explanation as to what it said. It could simply be the manner in which the acting along was done. Now, I then want to conclude and say that I will read this uh, portion of uh, what is coming out. As part of a nefarious agenda to undermine the economic interests of Zimbabwe, including particularly putting the president in the light that is portrayed in the, in the documentary, these persons sought to use Ambassador Yubes Angel as a basis to then carry out that agenda. And the national <coughs> intelligence framework decided that they would play along to see how far it would go. They have already done that, and sufficient information has been obtained as a result of that exercise. And this belongs to the wealth of information that the national intelligence framework here has. I have not been asked to get into the details, but I've been given the authority to answer questions that you might want to ask in relation to issues coming out of the documentary. But the final word that ought to be repeated is that what you see is not real. 
what you see is real acting going along as part of a classified intelligence framework. You people ought to may realize that these are things that are difficult to understand because you don't live in the world of how national intelligence operations works. <laughs> <laughs> that can really seriously put my big that anyone who operates in that world would understand what we are saying and would understand the difficulties that we have if we have to say it out. Ordinarily, would have ignored that and leave it uh, to the processes that are there. So I think I should make that very clear and make that clear as well. He has never worked for the president. There are no deals that are done between uh, the ambassador and the president or the president's family. The president's family was never involved at any stage, and all the things associated with that coming out of the documentary are really acting alone. I would say that I, I couldn't get um, in the better expression for it, so he will forgive me for that. But the Shona, there is a, a, a saying that Wanyangiraya uh, Ona. <laughs> so this is what would explain. So wanyangiraya wana, wanyangiraya wana. Ine gechingo bona, uchingo, uchingo na zonga, aisu bona. Iwo chungo da osuli, osu bona. But this is the vision that is coming from my client, which we thought we should put across to the public. He is totally, totally doing his work to the best of his ability. He is not involved in any corrupt activity of any sort. And he has never dealt with the movement of gold in any way, whether the formal or informal movement of gold. All what you see in the documentary in relation to him is playing along. And that the, all the conversations, I think I also listened to some of them, the voices that you hear there, clearly if you know the persons involved, they, they will not be their voices. <laughs> that is all. I should thank you very much for, for the framework that we have put out there. I am the one who is to say, yes, so I start here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Tohoza in Casino. Uh, you said uh, whatever that uh, your client was, was doing, what was portrayed for, of him doing in that document that was part of the national classified intelligence operative right so my question is is uh, the prophet working for the intelligence now and is he also speaking on behalf of the intelligence uh, of agents because i'm sure if this involved the intelligence as an entity which stands alone of itself it will get altered to respond uh, thank you very much for that question i think the question is very good in the sense that it gives me an opportunity to say the intelligence never addresses the media. The intelligence <laughs> never says what's happening. The only reason why we have to address the media and we have to somewhat disclose is because of the very awkward situation that we are placed in, where someone goes in three, four episodes of something that ought not to have come up. That was a failed attempt in that documentary, and the failure those persons, they were found out, they were outsmarted, and then, but then they now want to go on a full throttle. So we have to just come out because the, if we don't say what we are saying, uh, my client feels very strongly that people would think he is a gold smuggler, he is a corrupt person, and that between him and the first family or the president, there are dirty things happening, and there's nothing like that. So he is both exonerating the first family everything that is, because if you look at especially the last one that we were watching today, it's all about uh, the president in this family, and all about linking. That was the initial agenda which made my client to then ensure that the old people would not see the president. And so if the national intelligence people don't speak out, they don't speak out uh, on this issue. And this, we were not sure what, how they will react to the fact that we, my client felt he has to come out uh, and say this. So it's just a follow-up. The reason why I ask this question is for, for
for us to be sure, because um, I am very much aware that the government <coughs> doesn't address the media, but here your client is disclosing to us that no, there was actually an operation. So <coughs> when you say he's speaking on behalf of the table, he's not disclosing this information to us. We didn't know that there was an operation in the Well, he's not speaking on behalf of the intelligence. He's speaking on his own behalf to show to the world that he's not corrupt. He's not a gold smuggler. He's not involved in all the money laundering things that are coming out. <coughs> but that, that, he had to do that because the threat to the national security interests came out of his work. They wanted to use him. He had, he had been appointed. And remember, these things took place, like I said, he had been appointed, I think, six, seven months into because the COP26 was in about October, November 2021. He had just been appointed six, seven months into his appointment. And also, I think the other fact I didn't put across was that all the episodes from episode one up to episode four, they took place over just two meetings over two days in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the UK. And this is quite critical. The impression created by the episode is a long, winding interaction by people that there are other players in the in the documentary. I'm speaking on behalf of my client. So he's not coming here to, to say that necessity demands that he has to disclose whether it's allowed to do or not. But surely if, we, if he doesn't say so, do you think that uh, Ambassador Hubert Angel is some uh, gold smuggler or someone? He has never done that in his life. That's what he's asking me to let the world know. Yes. Thank you very much. So, uh, my name is Tyson Mwanda. You say that uh, this whole strategy, what he's part of, uh, Ambassador Hubert Angel said was part of a national security strategy. But then last week, the RPC froze his uh, bank account, saying that investigating his involvement in gold and in money laundering. Can you please explain a bit the confusion? Because it seems now a bit confusing that he's, he's working with the government as part of a national security strategy. But then the same government is freezing his account and investigating it. Uh, thank you again for that question. Remember that the RPZ is not part of the national intelligence. <laughs> so I, I, we would not be able to answer for it. I'm sure that, yes, but there are so many things that will happen. I think that is not just, we have said that they are think, acting alone, but I think in the process they could discover other things not related to my plan. But those measures were taken by the RPZ and we are not responsible for them. It would have been a different story if you had said to me that the national intelligence framework of the country has gone after my client when he's giving this explanation. This explanation can only be disowned by the national intelligence framework, which says, well, that is not the case. But we're here, I mean, if you look through the documentary according to his uh, version, which I've just put across, there are so many things that don't add up as well. And that uh, the sheer belief, I will give an example of what I was in today's episode, where they, and no one would believe that the president owned some property in Zipport or whatever. But when it is coming out, it's part of playing. You are trying to see how far they were going, and they were found where they were going. And the country is better off intelligence-wise after what you have seen in the documentary. That's what I can say. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. And I'll, I'll, I've got three questions for you. Number one, at what stage do you, you say that we have two days meeting in Japan? At what stage they notice that this guy is out of Germany and then choreograph everything? <coughs> and I said that they could be able to imitate the voice of the choir within that two days. <laughs> and this actually is probably the first day to get the dressing because they call the call wearing a suit, which is different from the call you mentioned on the first day. Number two, who's, which part of intelligence was he working for? MIT, CIO, CIO. I believe all of these form part of the intelligence unit in this country. And the FIU is not part of the RPZ, just for your for, for information. It's an intelligence on its own, which also probes the RPZ. Which, which one was he working for? Was he working for the CIO or the FIU or the MIT? Then, if one was to tell you that Shua is confirmed that she took the call, 
how you plan to spawn. For that Scott has confirmed that he received a little I do not know myself <laughs> the structure of our intelligence framework. My instructions are very clear that uh, it is an intelligence operation. I think that they work together. Which part, how they are structured and so on, is not part of what we are putting across. I'm sure those are the follow-up issues you would carry, and you can carry them. For now, my instructions are to say what I've said. If this doesn't stop further inquiries, and this doesn't also stop the fact that at some point, perhaps, uh, you could have other people addressing all these issues followed up. You, you might come across my client and say, at some point, you can ask them those questions. But what has to be going out now is that point. Then if it is part of a, you, you, you have used the choreograph, it's a playing along that was properly. I think the intelligence works very efficiently. And you want it, uh, according to your question, you think that they would want two days or three days to do whatever they did. I'm sure they might require much less time than that. So we don't know. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Panashe Nondola. <laughs> um, my first question is uh, the first statement that was released by your client. He said uh, at some point he doubted uh, the intelligence that was coming from the security. Is he saying that uh, or as a candidate at risk, at uh, security risk? And my second question is uh, there are sentiments out there that he was pressured by the first family to clean them or to this uh, press statement. Uh, okay. how, how would you respond? Uh, I, I think I should respond to both questions. Uh, uh, the first one is that you say my client issued his first statement. It is not true that it is out, which I can confirm is true. Is mm -hmm. that uh, as they were playing along, certainly my client had moments where he doubted whether these people were real as what had been conceived that they intended something bad and that we could relate with them as bad people. There were moments when there was just genuine confusion. As to, are they real? What do we think they are? That's, that, that did happen. And he has to say this, and he's saying it is a man of God as well, and that uh, you must not forget <laughs> that uh, that is something that we have said we should come up, and I've actually been instructed to say so that there would be moments where he doubted whether in fact the intelligence framework was correct in characterizing these people as not. So you'd have a few moments. What if they actually intend to invest? What if they actually intend to real come and build and so on? Those moments were, were, were coming from time to time. But th those two days interactions clearly were on the basis of the intelligence framework that I've indicated. And then I can't go into the details like the, the other person of what. For me, I would not understand. I'm a lawyer. I certainly would not have the expertise to say how intelligence operates. But there's another portion of your question. You said that uh, my client has been pressured by the first family. I have not interacted with the first family myself, but I have interacted with my client. It's not a two-day thing. Uh, he, has, he did actually consult with me quite some time. Ago. And the, from the time that I was consulted, we, we had to wait for the last episode. He, he took advice from me that it would be most appropriate for him to go to the public after the last episode. And then during that period, he, he was very clear that he had never had any interaction with the first family, the way it is portrayed. No, he had never seen the first lady. And that his only interaction with, was with the president. And that he is in this situation. One, the intelligence framework said that those people must not meet the president, but get to meet them, play along, and let's see. Remember that the country has to be doing these things, and so uh, I, I, I'm not qualified, but I think that is a complicated thing when intelligence gets involved. So there's no pressure from the first family uh, as far as I am concerned, as far as I know. And that if there is anything, there is pressure on the part of my client. He feels morally obliged to come out to the public and say what he said, that he has never, and that the first family was not involved in the manner that the documentary is. The issue is not about my client. If you look at the documentary, it is about the president and his first family. It's clear that there is that political agenda. Thank you so much. Is he still uh, employed as a uh, 
Yes, very much so. We <coughs> still employed uh, in that capacity, very much so. At least up to the last few minutes when I came. Yes, my name is John Kassim, uh, freelance journalist. I, ju I just want to find out, maybe clarify on the issue of uh, the name uh, dropping that we have been done allegedly. Uh, yes, you are saying that this is what your client is saying. Uh, did he know ahead of time the nature of questions that were coming for him to then rush to his phone? Maybe because there's a moment that he rushed, someone took some, uh, these guys aside when they were talking about 1.2 billion or something like that. And the name, name dropping we were being done. Was he aware of the questions ahead of time? Okay, what you are calling name dropping? is what we are explaining on the base of an intelligence operation. Uh, and that, uh, I think that if you call it name dropping, you are seeing it as a reality, what's going on there. And that's what we are explaining here, that that is not the fact. All what you see is part of this classified framework. And you are playing this part very well there. When it gets out, the, the uh, in fact, uh, I'm taking too many questions, so perhaps I end up saying things that may be out of my instructions. I don't want to be fired, but let me, <laughs> let me, let me, be, let me be clear that um, my client and others were not aware that they were being, you know, when they first had their meeting, the first meeting that they had, these guys um, claimed that uh, they wanted to take some pictures for purposes of whoever, that uh, they were just to say that the meeting was going on. And so for a short time, two or three minutes, that's when they saw, like, the way you are doing here, I'll see that there are cameras. And then you pretend that you've taken your camera away. So the rest of everything that is happening was done clearly uh, because of that nefarious agenda, completely uh, badly by the persons involved. So a cruelty on the part of the persons that were dealing with. Right. So, which is what was happening. So when you see the movement that... Uh, keep coming. And those are the movements that have made my client to explain as he is doing. I'm sure one of these days, if you were to be in that kind of situation, where certain things are not never supposed to get to the public because they are of an intelligence nature, once they come out, the public, it will take time for the public to appreciate them, which is the reason for the documentary. For example, what, how do you explain the fact that yesterday we announced that there will be a press conference at 2, when they said they would have their thing at 10, 11, 12. Then they suddenly put it off and we had to cancel our press conference. Then somewhat around the evening, they start putting in two minute uh, you know, uh, excerpts. I'm sure you saw that. And then in the morning, unannounced, they then played their uh, fourth episode. You, you all saw that. And that's not part of a, a it, it's an agenda, which uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. that's what uh, my client believes. It's a, my role, uh, ladies and gentlemen, has been to put across what my client is saying, which I've put across that uh, it is not for real. It's a classified intelligence framework. That's what he wants uh, to be made clear. He is not paid by government. He has refused to be paid by government. He has not abused his diplomatic passport. As I said, he's using a British passport that I can repeat over and over again. He's a business person, as you may know. Um, apart from his work as a man of God, he's also into business. And that he will not account for the acts of others. But he's very concerned also that uh, even the, this initial conduct of this group, which has led to all these things, he's very concerned about that. So he has issues with uh, clearly how he came up to be uh, uh, met in conduct with these people in the first place. And then, I, I should also announce that uh, clearly there are some people that have gone overboard in using the documentary to mischaracterize the nature of my client. Certainly there will be legal action taken uh, against those that continue to peddle <coughs> things that damage his reputation. And I think there's a law of defamation if you are aware. And that will be taken advantage of. But we, we first have to do this and say this is what uh, oh, there are so many questions. Uh, my, my last question. Uh, as a man of God and as a prophet, you, you could act, you could not see or 
professor that she was doing for it. That's outside my instruction. <laughs> I just want to, to be clear here. So what you, what definitely what you are saying is there is no real existence of this documentary. Only an, an act up in the in investigation operation. Is that right? Uh, I, I would not borrow your web. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I would not borrow your web. Let me stick to what I've already said. <laughs> so you're, you're giving me your own interpretation. No, I just but, want to understand if that's it. Because <laughs> that's what it, you are nearly saying. Like I said, that's your there, there have been no, there have been no cause made. It was an operation. It was they played along. That's the story. They played along because we made S decoy mm -hmm. and so forth. Okay. And those are the issues that uh, look. I think we must separate your interpretations of what I've said. <laughs> <laughs> you have recorded what I've said. That is what I have instructed to say. I maintain that. So even when you say I will just repeat. If you, if you want me to say, does it mean that? I will simply repeat what I have said, which is it doesn't help us. You are the media, you, uh, you interpret, and I think you have the freedom to interpret our vision as we have put across. But what we thank you for is that we have had an opportunity to say these things. Whether you think it's wise and wise, uh, 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 plausible or not plausible, I mean, these are the debates that you can carry yourself. But uh, for me, I have come with that message. And this is what I'm delivering. And I'm sure I'm doing well in that. Yes. So, as a man of God, to preserve his reputation, why did he give the public a warning that this documentary would be coming? He was not aware of the documentary coming. He was also not aware of what they were going to do. What he was aware of was that the machinations, the, the activities of those people had been frustrated. They had been found out and outsmarted. What they were going to do, obviously, we, we had to wait and see so that we then deal with the thing after it was done. So, I mean, I think the, the persons behind the documentary intended a particular objective. Whether they have achieved it or not, we don't know. They must be in their own world in which either they are celebrating or oh, they are not celebrating, we don't know. But we have no control over what they do. What we have control over is what we are saying now, that indeed there was that approach for my client and his office to facilitate this group seeing the president. Security checks then showed that those people were not intending good things. But it was important for security reasons to actually use that opportunity to get sufficient intelligence information for the interests of Zimbabwe, then my client, without his choice, got involved in that process. Yes? <coughs> Prof, um, you clearly stated that uh, this uh, press conference is uh, actually to, in a way, to clear your clients and to represent your clients' uh, interests that he was part of the National Intelligence Corporation, right, which was not meant to be in the public domain and you they said that you want to present to the uh, national intelligence uh, systems. So my question would be, if you are representing the interest of your client, so are you now saying that uh, since his image has been soiled, your client's interests uh, come above the national interest, yet this was supposed to be a secret uh, mission which was not supposed to be in public domain? Uh, well, I think I, I hear your question. In fact, the answer to that question is what I say. It is in the national interest that these things now come out. I think that ordinarily, intelligence issues don't come out in the public. And then also ordinarily, the intelligence people themselves don't say they are. My client is not part of that intelligence uh, framework. But he is saying it, as I said, morally he feels he has to do it. And that when he's doing it, it's in the interest of the country. It's in the image coming out of the documentary that uh, all our gold is being uh, taken out of the country and that it is benefiting a few that uh, the president's family is doing nothing but all uh, gold smuggling, that uh, the president himself is involved. That is clearly false, clearly without foundation, and meant to damage uh, the uh, interests of the country. At the end, we then justify those who put measures against us, some change and so forth. So it is in the interest of the country to say this. And as you know, always you balance interests. Things say what you do might undermine other interests, but in this 
case, it's not just about cleansing the image of my client. It's all about the national interest as well. Yes, it's a question. Yes, uh, my name is Mutenda Mnongo. Uh, if I'm clear enough, when you made your presentation, you said that when your client was doing his investigations, he was assuming if these people were legit or not. So can we say that we can we say that other things that happened in this document are true because your client was assuming if this if what what they, these people were doing was true or well I think that uh, it would not be possible in the press conference to go through the document and say this is where my client is in town <laughs> and this is where he is. What he wants you to know is that he was also operating even as he was going along and playing this role that uh, there were moments of doubt as to whether the intelligence resource may have got it wrong to say well those people are not for good they will not see the president make sure that they will not see the president but we want to play along with them we want to see how far they will go he is not a trained uh, <coughs> intelligence operator he is a man of god he is an ambassador at night. <laughs> and i think in playing that role that's my understanding you would certainly but, but was it not dangerous to use a man who is not trained in that operation to do such a huge operation? He was already in the crossfire. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you must understand. Yes, I, 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 let's understand where it is coming from. He already has these people brought to him by his team. One member of his team says these people want to meet the president. They are about investment opportunities that they want to discuss. His role has been appointed to ensure that we get investment. That was his role. So he, he's already with these people. It's only when you discover now that you have to do the security checks <coughs> that you get the information there that says the people which you already are interacting with are not good for the country and they do not intend good things. You see that. So he has to be the one to do it uh, in the circumstances. I think your questions have to come to an end at some point. Uh, just someone I'll come back to you and then the other hand there, yes. Yeah. I'm sure you will agree that at some point we have to, to come to an end. Yes. Okay. Uh, Professor, my question is, uh, since you say that uh, the minister was doubting those people, why did he keep on entertaining them? And uh, as far as calling uh, people who, uh, who you, uh, were big people, like name dropping, like those people are not from Zimbabwe and they, they, they don't know Rushwa and they don't know the best place. Like, what was the purpose of calling them whilst he was doubting them? Well, that was consistent with the decoy. It was also consistent with carrying them along because I think if we give details, these persons wanted, all they wanted was ultimately to get at the president and the first family. They had already a pre package, which is what was discovered by the intelligence. And which is what the documentary, despite all that happened, seeks to still portray. So it's consistent with that framework that has come out. Right. Let's leave this for discussions and interpretations because we have put out the facts. The why is and why not? I think that's part of the debate that will come up. But the version of my client has been put across. 